What's Better Today? And welcome to the Leadership Advantage podcast by Dr. John Kenworthy. The Leadership Advantage isn't some magic pill or silver bullet to instant success as a leader. I'm sharing the art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your potential in life and work. Hey there and welcome to this week's edition of the Leadership Advantage podcast. And in the past couple of weeks I've been discussing about using online learning and talking to many organisational leaders. They're telling me that online learning or e-learning is dead in their organisation. And that they need something else because people simply aren't using the e-learning that they're putting in place. And it's replaced so many of the classroom-based learning and development activities so that what people are doing now is simply not developing. But there's a great desire to move beyond blended learning. And some of today's leading organisations are flipping the corporate classroom. Are you getting sidelined? Let me throw up some startling statistics. The Henley Business School Corporate Learning Survey in 2016 shows that the desire for online-only executive development remains very low, at less than 12% of senior leaders and high potentials. Their desire for project-based learning and development has stayed steady at around 33%, a third of senior leaders and high potentials like project-based learning and development, which is pretty similar to their desire for experiential-based workshops, just less than 30%. But blended learning, where we are using classroom, sometimes experiential and online, is gaining in popularity, up to about 43%. But classroom, classroom-based learning traditional classroom workshops are increasing in popularity. Nearly half of the senior leaders and high potential surveyed would prefer that. But what has been surprising is that a whopping 66% of senior leaders and 56% of high potentials would much prefer to be coached than any other learning method. But this isn't what organisations are providing. Why are so many corporates adding more online-only programmes in a bid to save money at the expense that learners will continue to dislike it as a method? 62% of corporates plan to offer online learning in 2017. Meantime, of technology-assisted learning that is used, 67% are accessing via a mobile device. That's according to LinkedIn's 2017 Workplace Learning Report. And another organisation, World Hub Learning in Australia, looked at trends in 2015 showing that Australian companies at least were balancing face-to-face online and on-the-job training, noting that at least 70% of learning and development involved some face-to-face development. The British uh, organisation, the CIPD, also in 2015, noted the trend towards more in-house made programmes, with significant growth in the use of in-house coaching, also on e-learning and on-the-job training. Organisations are seeing that coaching, in-house mentoring and buddy schemes, together with the -the on-the-job training and increased use of mobile learning, in particular, in a blended format, with face-to-face training, will dominate as the most effective methods. So the demand for blended learning continues to increase, but will this be developed entirely in-house? If you are in the business of delivering face-to-face training and are neglecting the use of technology, you are soon going to find yourself hunting for ever smaller scraps of work. 
Even the lucrative speaking business is taking a major hit, with a big drop in demand for external conferences and events. So why the hype and massive investment in something like on-learning, online learning that appears to be less than popular? Well, it helps us to consider a brief history of how we got here. On the show notes for this week's episode, I've done a little timeline diagram, but let me describe it a little briefly. Because technology that supports learning is evolving at an ever-increasing rate. And organisations are very quick to adopt new tech as soon as it becomes available. And nowadays, the choice of tech is massive and it's confusing. And it's not always what the learners want to use. Way back in the 1980s and early 90s, the very early days of computer-based training or CBT as it was known then, perhaps it was the novelty that made people excited to use and complete CBT courses. And let's face it, CBT has been around since the 1960s, but very few people had their own computer. And CBT was taken inside classes or computer rooms with a technology teacher around who would help out when needed. Meantime, the Open University in the UK teamed up with the BBC and started broadcasting courses on television and radio in 1971. And distance learning took off, enabling students from anywhere in the world to study for a degree at home. The 80s saw the dawn of the first Mac and then the IBM PC and people began to buy and use a PC at work and at home, first with VisiCalc, then Lotus 123. Finally, non-technically minded people could use and benefit from this technology and everyone got very excited about how books would be replaced by computer books and the universities began to take the ARPANET the forerunners of the internet, seriously for collaborative research. Then in August 1991, the real opportunity for what we now know as e-learning began. Yes, Brian Adams was top of the billboard charts, but perhaps more importantly, the World Wide Web was open to the public. Email began to take off and computer-based training became e-learning in 1999. The very first course delivered over the web came from Penn State University. These were exciting times. Computer technology was becoming mainstream, but it was still mostly used by technophiles. Courses were mostly text-based, occasional images, a few used audio and video, and nerds loved it. Schools built computer labs, and universities were predicting the death of the classroom lecture. But streaming was not impossible. In the 2000s, businesses adopted e-learning and rolled out courses to train workers. Online courses rapidly evolved from text-based through a brief detour through three-dimensional virtual reality environments to audio and video. And then in 2008, Facebook took off and social learning became the in thing. Whilst the iPhone had opened up the possibilities for the smartphone in 2007, it wasn't until 3G networks were ubiquitous that mobile learning began to have a real impact. And the online world for learning took another spin and the possibilities of M-learning were explored. Now, in the late 20-teens, MOOCs, massive online open courses, are the fad of the moment together with M-learning and combining this with social learning and the fairly recently minted term bite-sized learning. When I first created my uh, first e-learning course back in 1988, strictly speaking, it was still called CBT then, there wasn't much choice about what tech to use or formats. To modern standards, it was very crude and used text on black and white monitors using ICL computers. But by 1991, we could begin to use bulletin boards and communicate live using ARPANET. Today, the choice of tech you can use, formats and possibilities is dizzying. Yet even millennials tell us 
that they prefer classroom-based teaching and books over e-books. The technology makes everything possible, including virtual worlds in three-dimension space. And even as you stand at the front of a classroom to teach, every single participant will have their phone on and often two or three devices, and they will be distracted by incoming messages and alerts. People willingly consume streaming video and play interactive games, scroll through hundreds of inane updates from friends, but deliberately learning using these devices? Nah, not so much. In part, because of the massive information overload that everybody now faces, bite-sized learning is showing signs of being a winning approach. When your audience has the attention span of a goldfish, you need to design learning in tiny little bites. But how small, though, is the right size? You'll have watched some TED Talks. They've become exceedingly popular and they last a maximum of 18 minutes. Long enough to get a message across and short enough to get enough context, examples and review included. It's based on avoiding cognitive backlog. And done well, an 18-minute TED-style talk is one approach that is working. But even 18 minutes is too long for many users. Some professionals in this field are striving for the sub-five-minute lesson. That's all well and good when your learner has the self-discipline to go onto whatever platform you choose and go there to learn for even five minutes. It's not that learners are not motivated to learn. They are, just not sufficiently so to make time to do so. Not when there is a million and one other things demanding their attention, many of which require little cognitive effort. And our brains love to avoid effort whenever possible. Meantime, learners still enjoy classroom-based learning and projects and experiential workshops and most of all, coaching. Essentially, all are learning activities that are driven by a teacher, facilitator or coach at a given time with specific objectives and tasks. And learners need to schedule time away from other things that distract. It seems that learners prefer to have someone else drive what and how they learn. Maybe this is a hangover from the education system, or maybe it's laziness on the part of learners. But self-starters who choose when and how they learn are few and far between. Simply providing the resources to learn is not enough. Learners prefer to be told when they will learn and what they will do in order to learn and have someone direct that activity. Classroom-based learning and required book reading are terrifically popular, but alone they rarely produce the business results and learning transfer that are needed and desired. Experiential learning, work-based projects and coaching do produce the business results, but one-to-one executive coaching alone is expensive. Supervising and coordinating work-based projects is expensive. Experial workshops are expensive. And you know, online learning could support all of this, but few people want to use it. So how? How does an organisation leverage technology to keep costs down whilst providing learning and development in a way that participants prefer and that produce the results for the business? Well, that's why we need to flip the corporate classroom now. Currently, there are four almost separate learning worlds. Classroom-based learning, which is preferred by about 44% of senior leaders and high potentials for the well-known benefits of personalization, networking, and getting out of the office. Project-based learning and learning in action gets far better results for the business and almost as many people prefer that type of approach. Then there's online learning, which promises many benefits for the administration and the business, but is simply not the mode of choice for many. What they do want is coaching. A whopping 66% of senior leaders and 56% of high potentials want coaching because it is both personal and powerful and private. 
But what if we provide learners with what they want through coaching, utilising technology to provide this in a way that benefits them and the business with experiential learning and workplace-based projects? Flipping the corporate classroom by levering technology for what it is good for whilst providing learners with the format they want brings these four worlds of learning together. Led by good coaches and supported by coaching trained managers utilising online technology to flip the corporate classroom with a strong focus on learning in action individually or better still in project groups. Drip feeding the learning and development over time in bite-sized segments to steadily increase the impact on learning and the impact on the business. See, in the traditional corporate classroom, the event is all before the learning event. Pre-work may be assigned, but more often than not, it is ignored as being less important than everything else the participant needs to do today. The classroom event is attended and is hopefully entertaining enough at a good venue with delicious food to gain a five-star evaluation. Participants leave the class happy and rested after a couple of days out of the office to face a backlog of work and all the promises of changing how things are done fade away and come to naught. In the flipped corporate classroom, the learning is a continuous cycle of learning. Application in the workplace and review with the direct support of coaches and managers, all facilitated through online technologies so that participants can be supported anytime and anywhere with workplace projects designed to apply learning and bring direct benefit to the business. The return on investment steadily increases as learning is immediately transferred to the workplace. Now, if this produces so much better business results and return on investment, why aren't more organisations doing this? Well, for the most part, it seems that the KPIs for those who arrange learning and development has been focused on the number of hours of class time attended, rather than the business impact and ROI. Plus, the flipped corporate classroom requires a lot more administration support. It's a lot like herding cats and few coaches are ready to take on the challenge of supporting participants and their managers and keeping everyone on track. Yet technology can be of an enormous help and once set up can make the administration a whole lot easier and the chances are that you've already invested in much of the technology that you need. You're just not deploying it and supporting it in a way that gets your learners to not just use it, but want to use it. In practice, the flipped corporate classroom requires more interactive support than the traditional classroom model. That is, it means more work for both the facilitators and the development team and the sponsors. But then, that may be why the traditional classroom approach doesn't work. Flipping the corporate classroom does require more effort on part of the L&D sponsors and the development team and a whole lot more from the coaches and facilitators. But that's because we need to take away the unnecessary burdens from learners so that they can actively participate and be guided to ensure the business gets the results and the learners enjoy the process. If you want to improve the business impact and ROI of your learning and development, it's time for a revolution. It's time to flip the corporate classroom now. Get in touch with us. See how we can help you. Discuss what you need to do in your organisation to get your learning and development to deliver on the business impact, the learning transfer, and the return on investment that it so richly deserves. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode and will share some highlights with the people you care about most. My team and I are working on a series of exciting new projects in this art 
and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your true potential in life and work. To learn more, visit leadershipadvantage.com or just search for Dr. John Kenworthy and connect with me.